Southern Mississippi's Golden Eagles enjoy a rare open day and start to get ready for the mean green of North Texas, the Conference USA opener. That's all ahead on Southern Miss Sports Today. Well, hi everybody. Welcome to Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Jay Hobson presented by Bank Corp South. Well, the Golden Eagles have just finished up an open date and they're getting ready to return to the field this weekend when they take on the Mean Green of North Texas in their Conference USA opener. Hop real quick, even though it was a couple of weeks ago, let's talk about just for a minute the Monroe ball game. You played Louisiana Monroe a couple of weeks ago over in Monroe. When you think back on that ball game, what sort of stands out? Well, I tell you, there was the, the, the goal line stand is, is a series that stands out and then the ability of our offense to counter. Each time uh, Monroe scored, it felt like we countered and had, had two nice drives and scored. So that's something that uh, you know, good football teams do, so I was pleased to see that. But I thought for the most part, you know, we uh, moved the ball well, and I thought defensively we played pretty good. Yeah, that was one of the turning points. They, they're about to, they've got it at the one yard line first and go at the one. If they score, all of a yeah. sudden, going to be a 14 14 ball game. Right. But you hold them to the field goal, right. and then you drive down and score, and so all right. of a sudden it's 21 10. No question. The, uh, the, the goal line stand was a big play. I mean, big series. It, uh, certainly, I was proud of the guys. That was an exciting stand. And, uh, you know, it gave us that, that two score lead going into half. Felt like we had some opportunities in that third quarter uh, to uh, uh, kind of make it a three-score game, but they had a, had a good long run. Their quarterbacks were really good athletes, scored a touchdown, but then our offense came back and scored. Alan Zay made a big catch, Quadre put it on him. So that was, uh, that was probably the thing, John, that, that taking out of that game. When you get punched, you counter punch. I thought we did a good job of that. You know, one guy, if you're a Southern Miss fan or a Conference USA fan, you know of Edo Smith, but there's a guy who, you know, I think people around the country are maybe starting to see this guy as this versatile running back as far as catching the ball and running the football, blocking, doing all the things you want to do as maybe anybody in the country. Yeah, there's no chink in the armor. He knows that guy. He, you know, he can run it, he can catch it, he can block. Uh, he's a guy that, to me, is the total, total tailback. And certainly I think he's the next level player, and I think he knows a guy that, uh, again, he's made a ton of plays here in years past, and we're counting on him making a ton of plays this year. When you look also at the Golden Eagle offense, uh, Quadre Griggs now has got two starts under his belt. Did you see some improvement or see him get better from uh, game one this year to game three? Yeah, I think Quadre has played really pretty good all the first three games of the season. I thought he had a good second half at Kentucky. I thought he played well against Southern. and I thought he played well Saturday, uh, last Saturday. Quadre, because there's a couple of things and we've talked about it, you know, as he continues to grow and get better and better. But the one thing about Quadre and He's getting better and better each week, but we got to continue that journey. You know, like I said, there's competition. Key, Key's right there too, and he, he's got. Hey, he's on. He's in the wings waiting. So uh, you know, it's great that we have that type of competition at quarterback. Last week you had an open date. It came earlier in the season than uh, you know most of the time you'd like to have one. But I know you have said probably worked out better for the Golden Eagles. You had some guys banged up, and so good time to maybe recharge the batteries, right. get people it's healthy. A, it's a good time, and, uh, and also we started camp early, John. Uh, we started July 24th, so if you look at it, we're three weeks into the season. We're about week eight, and this is actually week nine. We have nine weeks left. So if you really look at, at the way camp starts now, in the late in late July, we're really at the halfway point of the season. So actually, it's really probably not that bad a thing. Just a minute, we're going to see a little feature we've done on Xavier Thigpen, the senior uh, defensive end from uh, up the road outside uh, of Laurel. He's a guy who has uh, you know kind of persevered through a lot of things in his career, but really turned into a really good football player, a great leader on he, the team. He is a, Xavier. To, uh, you know, he, he's a young man that uh, I think is playing some really good football. He's I think he's played. Uh, Three really good games, and uh, Xavier's a guy that I think I've talked about. He's a natural leader. He's one of those guys that uh, you know, I, I think is a uh, you know he, he's a team guy, and that's what I love about him. And he's just doing a great job. Coach Hobson's going to join us in just a little bit. He'll come back on the show, but in a minute we are going to visit with Golden Eagle defensive end Xavier Paul Paul Thigpen. We'll also hear our second part of our visit with the athletic director at Southern Miss, John Gilbert. So that's coming up. So let's meet Xavier Thigpen. The reason I came to Southern Miss was because of their defense. 
Uh, I was a defensive player, pass rusher, of course. Uh, I used to come to games growing up since seventh grade, and uh, I just wanted to stay close to my family, so that's why I came. Oh, uh, and I used to come watch the games when I was like coming up. Uh, a couple of plays stood out. I remember, um, I don't remember his name, but number two caught a 56-yard interception. He had long dreads. Uh, I think I was in eighth grade when that happened. And uh, I think they had like six turnovers that game. And uh, when Damian Fletcher hit that front flip when they was playing all corn State, he had the front flip and kept running. I I'll never forget that. Well, growing up, I played uh, basketball, football, ran track. Uh, I tried to do it all in high school, but uh, football, I just, Everybody kept telling my statue, uh, like, pass rush, pass rush, pass rush, that I can't be a post player in the NBA. I mean, I wasn't thinking about the lead. It's just that I was like, well, maybe I could have a little bit more fun rushing the pass the second quarterback. Growing up watching the defense fly around out there with them black helmets on, all black, no matter what colors they was wearing, but that black helmet, I mean, just just watching how they flying around, tap a hat. I mean, I, I always wanted to be out there and just have fun with them. Just, I know they was having fun. Me being a senior, a fifth year senior, I mean, just thinking back and, and me seeing a lot of leaders come before me and uh, how I followed them guys, followed them guys, and everybody kept telling me, Paul, when it's your turn, you lead, lead. So, I mean, just, just now I just figure out, like, I just have to do it by example and try to let others follow. I got the name Paul Paul in seventh grade. Uh, my high school basketball coach actually gave it to me because I got moved up early. So like, I was the one that everybody always used to make jokes about because I was the youngest on the team. So that name just came stuck. <laughs> well, when I first got here, uh, my cousin, of course, Dasmond McCollum, num number 45, Kyrie Thornton, and um, Nunez, they all took me up under their wings, mainly Kyrie and Daz. Um, they were showing me how to watch film breaking down the film for me, how to prepare for a game, and I was red shirted, but they still wanted me to learn it. And so when it's my turn or my time, it won't pass me by. This will be officially, I think, a 23 yard. They're gonna fake it, and Eagles shovel it ahead, and they're gonna get down towards the end zone. Is it a touchdown? It is. Touchdown, Southern Miss. Golden Eagles that time got to Thigpen. They shoveled ahead to Pawpaw, and Xavier Thigpen got it into the end zone. I, I didn't know it was my job, and, and it really wasn't. It, I mean, because you had myself and David who were competing. And we competed that spring, we competed that fall, and even though I was running the first team, I knew I couldn't, you know, there was no room for error because I was still learning, still learning the game, still learning what to do, what not to do. Uh, but I made it a conscious effort to kind of always to protect the ball, whether it be throwing it, running it, whatever it is to protect the ball, because that's one of the quickest things that can get you out, is not being able to protect the ball. So I knew going into it that, you know, yeah, I was a starter, but I kind of reverted back to when I was a freshman. Yeah, you can be a starter and still get, and get pulled. So the first game was against Tulane. And uh, I was even nervous I was more nervous during that game than I was in that Arkansas State game as a freshman because of, of the buildup. Because the year before as a freshman, we went back and forth with Tulane and they won on a controversial call on the field goal. All right, so with that being said, um, that first game was on TV and it was in the Superdome. All right, and that's the first time we'd ever been on TV, Southern Miss had ever been on TV, and which was a huge deal for us because, you know, at that time, there was no ESPN, the Fox Sports and all this other stuff. 
if you on TV, you you done something. I mean, you something something was something was going on in a, in a good way. If you were on TV, because only ABC and CBS shown games, and it was three games a week. It was that first regional game, the national game, and then that was it. There was no Saturday night games, no Sunday games, no Thursday games. Everything was done on Saturday. So we were on TV that day and playing against Tulane. All right, my first start, and really the first time I'd ever played on turf in the Superdome with the Saints playing all this. You got all this going through in my mind. I'm like, you know, wow. The first half was almost a disaster. I mean, if there was a mistake that could be made, I made it. And I'm saying to myself after halftime, this is not good. This is not good. So when halftime came back, when coming to the second half, I went back out there. I'm like, okay, good, I'm here. Just play ball, just play ball, because we were behind. And just play, just, just play ball, and, and that's what we did. We just played ball, we made a comeback, uh, we won the game, and that was just kind of start of things, and, and, and got the confidence going. And I know we ran through the first six games undefeated. Uh, we had beaten State, uh, we had beaten Ole Miss, um, so here we go, we're rolling, you know, 6-0. and Coming into my sophomore year, how good, can't get no better than this. That's what I'm saying to myself. You know, when you talk about football uh, scheduling uh, and, and larger a football program, I would tell you that the number one uh, factor is recruiting. You know, we have to have the best players uh, to be successful, and I like the direction that, that Coach Hobson has taken with our program. He's recruited really well. The second most important thing is scheduling, and so my philosophy is to play those schools that our fans can drive to, that they have an affinity for attending. Uh, so, so I like a more regional based. Uh, upon my arrival, we worked on a four game schedule with Tulane, which I think our, our uh, you know, university community will, will find that game of interest and will like going there. And likewise, I think their fan base will, will come here as well. Uh, we did a three game series with Mississippi State which is good, one, for the state of Mississippi, uh, two, good for us from a financial standpoint, but I also think it's really good from an interest standpoint. Not only will our, our fan base be able to go to Starkville for a game, but we'll get a home and home series with that as well, and so really beneficial. And then third, uh, we did the Liberty Series, uh, which is a little bit of an outlier, uh, but I would also say we need home and home games like the Liberty Series. There was a financial component to the Liberty Series that was intriguing where when we go to Liberty, uh, we'll get some funding for that game that you normally don't get in a home and home contract. And so while the home and home series is beneficial, there is a financial component that was attractive and needed and that's why we chose Liberty University. The, the Bauer Academic Center is really uh, my top priority for this coming year. Uh, the project was announced in 2015 for a renovation uh, underneath the west side of the stadium. Uh, the pursuit of a degree uh, should be the number one uh, goal of our student athletes. I want them to leave here with a piece of paper in hand that will help improve their quality of life as they move forward. And so the Bauer Academic Center is a key component to that. Uh, Kylie Amato and her staff do a wonderful job uh, of assisting our student athletes in their academic pursuits. Uh, our academic center currently it is not the type of facility that I want our student athletes to have to compete. While we are doing a really good job of competing in the classroom, 
I want to provide them with a much better uh, academic facility. And so by placing the Bauer Academic Center within the library will, will be not only a great partnership with the university, but will be really good for our student athletes from a proximity and square footage standpoint. You know, for our fan base and their involvement, I, I, I would tell them there are multiple ways that they can invest and support uh, the health and well-being in our student athletes. And, and that's really what I want them to, to consider. It is an investment. It's not an investment in John Gilbert. It's an investment in our student athletes and the Southern Miss Athletic Department. And they can really do that in a multitude of ways. Number one, if they can buy a ticket, I want them to buy a ticket. Uh, if they can come to a barbecue, an event, a fan day, I want them to do that. If they have the resources to join our Eagle Club, no matter what the amount is, I want them to join our Eagle Club. That is our annual fund. And it doesn't matter if you can buy tickets, if you can join the Eagle Club, those help us with scholarship costs. Uh, the Eagle Club is really the foundation of funding uh, for this department and it is really important that we have uh, a broad-based number of donors commit to that. Well, to me, what it means to wear the black and gold uh, is uh, a couple of things come to mind. N number one, I'm part of a tradition and legacy that embodies toughness. Uh, it embodies grit, uh, it embodies get the job done uh, no matter what your resources are. And I do like the, you know, anybody, anywhere, anytime. Uh, we, we are not a, um, we, we are not a, a white collar uh, uppity uh, group. We, we, we've got grit, we're blue collar. Uh, I think about putting my hard hat on and my taking my lunch pail and, and uh, get, getting the job done. And I really think as I've gone across this state uh, from Hattiesburg, Petal, Macomb, to Jackson, to the Delta, that, that's who we are. Uh, we're tough, we're gritty, and, and uh, we get the job done above all else. What I know about Southern Miss, I'll tell you what, you know, um, we'll start with that. First and foremost, I knew that this was a place that was built on great tradition as far as having a foundation. I've said it before, toughness. And uh, you know, if you're any type of competitor, you're attracted to that environment. You're attracted to that type of person. And uh, that goes right into who I'm working for right now currently and the staff that I work with. Uh, you know, we've got a, a very special staff here at Southern Miss and uh, a lot of, if not all credit, goes to Coach Hop with that because he's the one that's manufactured that staff. Uh, you know, we all work very well with each other. A lot of us have not worked with each other, some of us have. We've known each other though throughout the years. That's the way this, this fraternity kind of is with coaching. And uh, Coach Hops uh, sees that, sees things like that. Maybe one, one thing with this guy, his strengths, his strengths, his strengths. And when you can put together great staff chemistry, okay, then you've got something. And that's what he's done here. And uh, that was just, you know, when I had the opportunity and gotten the phone call uh, from Coach Hop, uh, you know, it was almost like how fast can I get the truck uh, packed? Because, you know, um, we'd had a chance to work together before. And, uh, you know, um, again, we had a great staff there. And I just know what he's about and how he runs his football program and he runs it in such a manner that both obviously us representing as a football team and us representing out in the community is so special compared to a lot of other places all right, and because we do do it the right way. Well, philosophy wise, you know, um, I've always believed in uh, setting a, a code of standards first. You know, we're gonna play physical. You have to be physical, okay? Um, you know, I've always believed, you know, when you can take a man and move him from point A to point B against his will, okay, there's nothing, uh, you know, you, there's nothing that can, uh, you know, be a more satisfying feeling than that. And that takes physicality. 
you know, that would be the first thing. Obviously, you've got to be smart. Now, do you have to be a Harvard grad? Absolutely not. But, uh, and a lot of that comes with experience because people do, don't realize that, you know, you've got a freshman offensive lineman, he's so much a better player by his senior year for a reason. And the biggest thing is you just got to love the game and you got to love the, this lifestyle. And, uh, you know, and, and that's my thing. I, I know so many guys out there, you know, and it's not even from a coaching standpoint, I just know guys I may have played with, you know, they could have been so much better ball players that they actually love this, the process, working out, everything that goes into it. Going to class, all right, being a gentleman out in the community and everything, you know, those are the things that you've got to have. You know, you've obviously, you know, you have to carry yourself a little different. And I think if you can follow those standards, okay, then you're going to have a chance to play, uh, you know, here at Southern Miss for us. Overall up front, from what I've inherited, uh, you know, um, it's funny because you walk into a situation to where you're some of these guys' fourth O-line coach in five years. And, uh, you know, you always ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, how do you approach this? And, uh, you know, uh, the one thing about something that I've always thought, well, you got to go fast. Okay, you can't hit anything, you can't walk into a situation, you got to hit it with the freaking full sprint. And there's going to be mistakes made, always, you know what I'm saying? That's how, you, that's, how you, that's how you learn as a coach and everything. But when I did, you know, get the chance to come down to Southern Miss, I knew I wanted to hit this thing sprinting. Uh, you know, I didn't, you know, come in promising this. I never promised anything. You know, for me to sit here and, you know, say that I'm going to be a place for 20 years, that'd be great. I'd love to, but that's not reality in the coaching world. It just isn't. Now, if I'm here, I would love it. Hattiesburg's been great to me. It's been great to my wife and everything. And, uh, you know, if that's what's in the plan, so be it. I, I, I'm going to be wearing black and gold for a long time. But I will say this, I didn't make that promise to them because they've been burned with that. And it, the most important thing with these guys was to make sure why I'm here as your offensive line coach, this is what we are going to do. Okay, and we need to focus on that, all right? And always remember, if you need anything, that door is open, okay, and you call me at any time, and you make sure that we're all on the same page working for the same thing. Here we go, right there, right there, right there, right there, Jack. Elbows, there it is, elbows, 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 get in a balanced stance, Jerry. You're watching Southern Miss Sports today. Southern Miss to the top. And we're back on Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Jay Hobson as the Golden Eagles now turn their attention to the Mean Green of North Texas. But before we talk about the Mean Green, we're also honoring the 1997 Conference USA Championship team. You could start naming the great players on that team, but it's always neat to have one of those teams back and let those guys uh, sort of, or let your current players kind of meet the, the former players and right. talk about championships. Right. No question. Of course, we got one right on the radio booth with yeah. Lee. Yeah. Lee Roberts is up there, but uh, those guys, and of course, Adelia's son is on our team now, Devin doing a tremendous job for us. So, uh, and, and it's just a great, uh, great time for those guys to come back and, and just share. And I love having the old players come back and talk to our players and just share that tradition of Southern Miss football. And that 97 team was a special team. Uh, certainly, I believe the first Liberty Bowl team and, and uh, just uh, it just should be a great night. And so we're, we're all looking forward to it. I know you mentioned you like the players to come back. I know one of the things you've done, I think in conjunction with uh, Mitch Williams, is you've brought back almost every week a former Golden Eagle player to kind of share with the current football team. Yeah, I think it's big. And, and I tell you, so many, so many uh, former players that have come back and talked to the guys, they've just been such wonderful role models. Uh, just, uh, you know, talking to them about their life journey, their faith journey. So we've been blessed to have a lot of old Golden Eagles come back and, and teach the new Golden Eagles, you know, what it's about. And uh, just, uh, again, it's a special thing. All right, North Texas on uh, Saturday at the Rock, the Conference USA opener. Uh, every game's important, but you want to get off to a good start in conference play. You do. And again, we always talk about we'll count our chips up at the end. That's the reality. But, uh, you know, it's a big game. North Texas has got an excellent football team, a very talented. Uh, you, you look at them on film, and I think they're a football team that's solid top to bottom, offensively, defensively. You know, they're a good quarterback, so I think had a tremendous year this year. Their tailbacks and their receivers have made a lot of plays. Their tailback, I think, behind Edo, they're the, I think they're the two top leading rushers in Conference USA. So 
uh, we know we've got a big test, and we know they're an excellent football team, so we, we, we know we have to be prepared. All right, Hop, thanks as always for the visit. Good luck this week. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Coxie. All right, Coach Jay Hobson of the Golden Eagles on Saturday against the Mean Green of North Texas. And again, the reunion of the 1997 Conference USA Championship team. So a whole lot going on on Saturday. We want to see you there on Saturday at the Rock and around the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi. Don't forget, Monday night, we're at Georgia Blue for the Golden Eagle Hotline with Coach Hobson. Come on by, visit with us. We'll talk a little Golden Eagle football. That'll do it. Have have a great week, everybody. See you next time. Another inside look into Golden Eagle football. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. Bocoma Casino invites you to come experience a Las Vegas-style atmosphere with small-town Southern Charm just up the road in Sandersville, Mississippi. You could drive over 70 miles to the coast, but don't risk the road. Bocoma Casino boasts over 700 high-energy slots, plus your favorite table games like blackjack, craps, roulette, and poker. Our 27,000-square-foot casino offers so many ways to win. Come see us at Bocoma Casino. Real winning, real close to home. Sandersville, Mississippi. Play here, win here. Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.